Hey there and welcome back to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. My name is Tori Solis and today I'm going to be sharing a time-lapse sculpture process video of making a Julie Corydora catfish jar. This one is pretty specific. If you're into freshwater tropical fish keeping, you may have come across these cute little dudes before. There are a lot of different kinds of Corydora catfish and to be honest, I love them all. The base of this sculpture is a wheel thrown white stoneware pot. I threw and trimmed this pot a few weeks back and I've had it stored in my damp box. A damp box is a sealed plastic tote with a layer of pottery plaster at the bottom. This box helps me to keep my work damp and workable until I get time to work on the sculptural aspects of the work. If you want to learn how to make a damp box, check out this nifty video that I made. So about Julie Corydoras, their scientific name is Corydoras Julie, but for some reason their common name is their scientific name backwards. Don't ask me, I don't make the rules. Corydoras are a group of small armored catfish. Notably, they have pokey spines on their pectoral fins. The pectoral fins are the flippy flapper swimmers on the front sides of the fish. The fins they would wave at you with if they were animated and waving at you from the tea shop. These spines can sometimes get caught up in a net, so if you have these fish in your tank and you ever need to get them out, try to use like a jar or a cup and chase them with a net into a jar if this is possible for you. I know that's a little ridiculous, but they can get their little flippy flappers caught in the net and then they can hurt themselves, so just a pro tip. Like other Corydoras, the Julie Corydora is a peaceful shoaling fish. Shoaling is a lot like schooling, but it's also different. A school of fish swim together in a coordinated pattern to travel in the same direction. They all have the same goal, they're working together like a unit. A shoal of fish swims together, but independently. Every fish in a shoal has their own personal vibe and agenda. A shoal is often way more loosely connected than a school, but a shoal can tighten with signif when significant threats are present. So if you see a big scary dude, everybody get together, shoal up. A shoal of fish is mostly connected for social and safety reasons. So in summary, corridor catfish shoal because they like to have friends and community. If you're gonna keep corridor catfish in your aquarium, I'm gonna have to insist that you get at least six. They really do seem to be happier with their little lives when they have a network of friends. I love to watch these shoaling fish. They have lives that are really dramatic. At least, they're really dramatic to me after I add my own little voiceovers to their actions to give them all names and personalities. The Julie Corridora is native to Brazil. They're most often found in the lower Amazon region in rivers and streams. The substrate in their natural environment tends to be a soft sand. This is really important because the tiny little barbels or whiskers on the face of the Julie Corridora are super sensitive. If your substrate is too rough, like something like lava rock maybe, it could damage or even wear down the barbels completely. You do not want to see a Corridora with busted up barbels. It is a very sad sight indeed. And if you're wondering how I know and how I've seen Corridoras that have busted barbels, I ran a fish store for five years and we would often take in fish and tank surrenders. Unfortunately, not everyone knows about the sensitivity of barbels and the importance of a soft, smooth, or sandy substrate, but you do, and now you can tell everyone, and we will all keep the happiest Corridoras in our fish tanks. The Julie Corridora is on the small side. This particular species gets to be around two to two and a half inches in total length. They're really an excellent addition to a 20 gallon or larger planted aquarium. Who wouldn't want more room to fish around? I'll be glazing this pot with a combination of clear glaze and Mako stroking coats. To get the details in the eyes, I'm using a dot tool to carefully dab in the details. I want a yellow ring in the eye, and ideally I would like for the black and yellow to not bleed together. The stroke and coat glazes tend to be mostly stable. It's a matter of me not splooshing one into the other during application. This pot will be fired to cone six in my Scut electric kiln. This pot turned out perfect. I really love it when the pot comes out of the kiln and it meets my expectations exactly. 
That's a really hard thing to do in ceramics because a lot of things are just outside of our control. The only thing is that unless you know exactly what a Julie Corridor or a catfish is, it's hard to appreciate this pot, I feel, as much. I thought about entering it into the state fair, but then I was like, they're not even going to know what this is, so I went with a different choice instead. So I hope this video finds the right folks who can gush about how adorable this little fish fish is with me. As of posting this video to Patreon, this pot is available for purchase on my website, bluenosetrading.com. By the time this video comes out on YouTube, I can't make any promises, but you can always check out my website, bluenosetrading.com, to see what's currently available. If you'd like to get early access so that you're on the list of people who get to see this stuff first, you can become a supporter of my work at patreon.com slash bluenosetrading. Thank you so much for tuning in this week, guys. If you'd like to support my channel, again, you can buy a pot on my website, bluenosetrading.com, or you can donate at patreon.com slash bluenosetrading. If you'd like to see my weekly art video on Friday and daily art short videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Blue Nose Trading, on YouTube. Thank you for being here. Remember that you are important, you have great ideas, drink lots of water, and I will see you all next week. Music